Good morning, Solid Rock. Good morning. Hey, it's good to see you all this morning. Good to be before you. Uh, we'd like to take this time to welcome you. Uh, if we have any visitors, do we have any visitors here? Well, I'm sure we have some visitors online, so we'd like to take this opportunity to bring you greetings on the web. But we'd like to take this opportunity to bring you greetings on behalf of our pastor, uh, Thomas Anthony Keyes, and our first lady. Uh, we greet you, we welcome you, we thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning and tuning in online. Um, please feel free to put something in the chat or even uh, to message us directly if you have any questions, concerns, or if you're thinking about membership. That would be awesome. We thank you all for joining us this morning and just ask you have a good time in the Lord. Good morning, Solid Rock. Good morning. These are your announcements and church news for this first Sunday in March, March 5th, 2023. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go about once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30 in the New King James Version. SRNBC has established the endowment program so that we might glorify God by building our new church on our land yeah, at 2,400 yeah. local homes. Amen. The endowment program allows participants to purchase a permanent reminder of their devotion to God and to Solid Rock. The program is designed to provide sufficient funds for SRNBC to construct the church facility and repay the mortgage that will be required. If you have any questions concerning the endowment program, please contact Deacon Mickens, chair of the building committee. You may also support this effort by simply contributing to the SRNBC building fund. Contributions to the building fund can also be made by visiting the church website and clicking on the donation button. Lastly, the Push Forward New Building Love Offering Container is available in the front of the sanctuary if you would like to donate to the building fund in that manner as well. SRNBC All In and On Mission 2023. Please keep in prayer Sister Patricia Rice, who is at home. Sister Mary Lane, who is at home as well. To notify the church of any illness, hospitalization, or death in your family, please email the church excuse me, the assistant church secretary, Sister Jamie Foster at jamiecfoster at gmail.com. And we will now have a special announcement by Sister Shirley Jones. Good morning, Salvador. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm just here to announce that, and I'm very excited to say that the crew SRNBC Youth Choir will begin rehearsals again. Uh, rehearsals will be on the second and third Saturday at 10.30 a.m. of the month. So I'm encouraging all who want to be a part of this choir to please come out. Please come out and support this choir because this choir to me was chosen by God. So we need to do whatever we can um, um, to, 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 to serve Him. So I'm asking that you please, if you have uh, children in the community or in the family who would like to be a part of this choir, please, please encourage them to attend. Because the enemy is out there. And the first people He is looking for is our children. So we need to bring them into a house where they can learn how to fight this enemy. I'm also asking that anyone who wants to help with this youth choir, please see me. And so that we can discuss what role you would like to do with this choir. I thank you. Please help me to help them fight this enemy. Thank you. Hey, 
again, if God has blessed you real good, can we stand to our feet and give God a hand, grab a praise in the house? Oh, come on, give me a best praise today. Come on, shout to God. Let the world know that God is good. And Jesus Christ is our Savior. Come on, shout out to God with a voice of Christ. And clap your hands, all you people.
Uh, your pastor will be preaching on the 15th and 29th. I am asking the choir and the ushers to join us for service. Uh, there is a special offering taking place to help uh, veterans, and I'll tell you more about that in the coming days. Amen. Please join us every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, it'll be a great time in the room. Uh, again, we're doing our push forward initiative, and we're getting closer, y'all. We're getting so close to entering in our building. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, y'all. I mean, I got goosebumps on top of goosebumps every time I go to the building. And we need to be excited to push forward. Here is my next slide. Here it is. Boom. See, see. Boom. See, there's some boxes, y'all. Y'all don't even know what it is, surely.
standing for the reading of the scripture.
give us everything we need. Father God, we love you because you've never forsaken us or left us. So, beloved, listen, so beloved, we're going to pray. God, we love you today. And we ask you, God, to forgive us of our sins this morning. There's some things we said that we should not have said. There were some things we did that we should not have done. And there are some things we were supposed to do that we didn't do. Father God, please forgive us. But oh God, help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. Let us let go of every grudge, every bit of bitterness, no matter what somebody's done to us. Because you've forgiven us today. And Father God, as we come before you, we know that you love us. You are not withhold any good thing from us. Father God, you've been so good to us. God, you've been wonderful to us. You've opened doors no man can shut. You've shown your power and your glory to us. So God, we come confidently this morning, bringing every one of our needs to you. We bring our financial needs. We bring our emotional needs. We bring our spiritual needs. We bring our physical needs, knowing that you are a God who can do anything but fail. Thank you for answering prayers today. Father God, even before the prayers are answered, give us your peace that passes all understanding. We thank you, Lord, that you're blessing us. We thank you for the building that 2100 Locust Land.
exalt your name, Father. Praise your name to the Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Well, it's offering time. It's offering time. Let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you are the King of all kings, the creator of all there is. Hallowed be thy holy and righteous name. Father, we come at this time to say thank you. Thank you for all the resources that you have provided to us. At this time, Father, we want to return a small portion of those resources to you so that they will be used for kingdom building. Father, we ask that you bless these offerings, bless these times. In the precious name of your son. All these things we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray it all at this time. And they all say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have three ways of giving here at Solid Rock. The first is by sending your tithes or offerings by mail to Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church, 5121 Dairy Street, Post Office Box 4513, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 17111. Second way of giving is by PayPal, by going to the church website at www.solidrockhbg.com forward slash donation and you can pay by PayPal. The third way, which is the most popular way of providing tithes and offerings to the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church and that is by way of Cash App. And the call sign for Cash App is dollar sign The Rock Pay. That's dollar sign T-A-T-E R-O-C-K-P-A-Y. Amen. Your tithes and offerings are greatly appreciated. At this time, we would ask that you stand and obey the directions of the others.
everybody here that's grateful for blood. You know what? Let me let me get my 
Well, let's do this one. Let me move to me. Let me let me start with verse 57. As the living father sent me, I I, I live because of the father. So he listen though, he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread. Somebody said this is the bread. This is the bread which came out from heaven. Not that your father made manna and are dead. But who eats this bread will live forever. Amen. Uh, um, drop down to verse 60 if you will. Therefore, many of the disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Here it is in verse, verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, You also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we come to believe and know that you are Christ, the Son of the living God. I love how the New King James Version says, We believe and are sure that you are in Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen, I'm not having a sermon, beloved, uh, or the topic here to determine the thought of Jesus. And, then, and the sermon title is, we, Jesus, we believe in our suit. We have some kind of, the some kind of, uh, you are what you eat. Amen. tell you, if you want to be sure, you are what you eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to be sure, say it If you want to be sure, you are what you eat. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that restores our soul today. Yeah. Father, we ask that uh, as we bask in your presence and worship, that you would open up our minds and ears and hearts to receive your word. Father, I'm just a, re a mere man, an ordinary man, and I've done my best to study, but I need your preaching power. And Father God, we all need to have our hunger reignited that we may follow you all the way. Father God, if there's someone who has never trusted you, let them see how wonderful the living bread is. Let them come to taste and see. It's in Jesus' name I, I pray. Amen. 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 Now, now, beloved, listen, don't judge your pastor. Don't judge your pastor. But, but one of my favorite movies, man, is The Temptations of Many Seeds. Listen, I don't care how many times it comes on, I watch it every time. You know what I'm saying? You know what about the Temptations, the singing group, the Beat Toy Michigan? A junior on the Temptations? Oh, listen, y'all say it, but y'all know about the Temptations. Come on, y'all. And they were known for hits, amen? And watch this, y'all. They joined Motown in 1961. Started working with Barry Gordon and Smokey Robinson to write songs for them. However, as good as those songs were, they couldn't get any hits. They started to be known as the Hitless Temptations. Because none of their songs hit the Hot 100. Next slide, if you will. But in 1964, the Temptations got their big break with my girl, ain't there? Yeah. Made it to the Ed Sullivan Show. Yeah. But y'all, in the miniseries, there were a couple of folks I want to bring your attention to. Yes. Brother Al, Al James Bryant, yes. he was a former member but quit the group because of some conflicts we had in the book. And then Johnny Mae Matthews, she was their manager, but cut the group loose because of some money issues. Ooh, that's a whole other survey right there. My point is, y'all, if they had just held on and stayed with the group just a little while, if they would have walked through the struggles, yes. endured some hard times, yes. made some sacrifices, yes. they would have made it to the big job. Yes. Amen. So where are you going, Pastor? Oh, you know, okay. And beloved, sometimes, isn't that like the church today? We lost our hunger and determination to be all we can be sometimes we need to go back to what we used to be dead. Our hunger and determination, it needs to be rekindled to follow after Jesus. Listen, y'all, if you listen to say amen, 
Now more than ever, the world is spiraling out of control, spiraling down into sin, and spiraling further away from the truth of God. And this hour ago, we need to be determined to follow Jesus. We need to be determined to serve Jesus. We need to be determined to proclaim Jesus. We need to be determined to praise his name. Somebody to say, Jesus, for the world is hungry for the living bread. Somebody need to lift up Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here that want to help the pastor lift up the name of Jesus? Yeah. 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 So I preach it again. Yeah. And so here we are, y'all. Y'all, we the beginning of March. Yeah, beginning of a new year. We get to the month of March, we're going to see some change. A turning of the season. Let's listen, y'all. The days are getting longer. The nights are getting shorter. The temperatures are getting warmer. Winter is ending. And the springtime is coming. Things are starting to grow again, y'all. We can't see the leaves on the trees. We can't see the flowers in the meadow. But we know that they're going to be growing soon. Change is coming. This is the point of this message here, sir. Why do you like somebody here under the sound of my voice needs to hear that what, while you may have been going through a tough time, you may have had some tough financial times, tough physical times, tough relationship times, tough times of depression. Listen, there is a springtime coming. Come on, Bible readers. I'm in Bible country. We can may endure for a night, but joy. Is coming. Real joy is coming in the morning. Tell somebody, morning is coming. Spring time is coming. You need to get ready. So we have a familiar uh, a passage of the Gospel of John. Very familiar miracle, y'all. Jesus fed the 5,000. Y'all know the story. People followed Jesus, got late in the evening. And, and the disciples said, Jesus, look, you need to give the benediction. There's not enough budget or money in the budget to feed all these folks. You need to be like Moses and let my people go. <laughs> but Jesus said, y'all give them something to eat. And just the job was bigger than they were. But Jesus, oh, come on, y'all. There was a need bigger than them. But Jesus already knew what he was going to do. I was on the shot like that. See, if you're going through something and it's bigger than you, you can trust that Jesus already got the answer for you. Yeah, I'm trying to get y'all. He already has the answer for you. He already gave you, Julie. Tell him again. It's already. All he needed was a little boy's lunch. Two fish and five little body rolls. And 5,000 people, women and children included, uh, uh, we're fed with 12 baskets left over. Listen, can I help y'all? There's no need you have that Jesus cannot fulfill. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jim. There's no need that you have that Jesus cannot fulfill. And so what this is, y'all, where is the funds for the building? Where is the money for your bills? Where is the healing for your body? Whether it's the saving of your souls, all he needs, all he wants is someone who is willing to trust him and give him their all. Let me help y'all. Don't let anybody tell you that God can't use you. He can use you despite your past. He can use you despite your haters. He can use you despite what gifts you think you don't have. God can use you. You tell me that God can use you. And you give whatever you have by faith to him. So after feeding 5,000, right, Jesus sends his disciples to the boat. And the boat ran right on the other side of the sea. And while, listen, as they were making their way, doing what Jesus told them to do, a storm came up. And they couldn't get to the other side. No matter how hard they rode. Listen, y'all, but listen, y'all. While they were in the storm, while they were rolling with all of their might, Jesus comes walking on the wall. I'm going to have to preach this again. He came. Oh, let me help you out. No matter what storm you're going through. Yeah, make it plain. Let me back up. You're going to go through a storm. Yeah. Yeah. And if you haven't been through a storm yet, yeah. keep going with it. Yeah. But even if you're in a storm, Jesus can still get you. 
Come on, this is the problem. You have the problem down the roads. No way. No way. Can't stop me. Come get me. Come on, dog. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. Jesus will come to you. Since they got the vote, they made their way to the other side. Now watch this, y'all. The people got up the next morning looking for Jesus. They didn't find him. Didn't find the boat. So they went over to the other side to find him, right? And when they found him, watch this, y'all. When they found him, yes, when they found him, they weren't hungry for his presence. They weren't hungry to worship him as Messiah. They weren't hungry, listen, to commit their lives in service to him. All they were hungry for was another fish sandwich. All right. All right. Say that again. All right. They weren't hungry to worship God. They weren't hungry to worship Jesus as Messiah. They weren't even hungry to give their lives in the service. All they were hungry for was another fish sandwich. See, Jesus knew this, right? And challenge them, not, listen, not the hunger for natural food, but the hunger for spiritual food. To feed on him. However, listen, once they heard it, Brother Paul, once they heard this, many people who called themselves disciples stopped following him. So I said, oh, oh, oh. But then Jesus turns to the twelve. The apostles will ask, will you two go away? But Peter, speaking for the group, I like Peter. He says, to whom shall we go? We believe in a sure. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And beloved, listen, can you listen to amen? amen? In this post-COVID era, when some of the things of this world were shut down and we couldn't get to them, now that they're made available, Many disciples, not you, but people I know, many disciples have lost their hunger for God. They've lost their hunger for the church. They've lost their hunger for Bible study. Lost their hunger for Sunday school. And lost their hunger for serving the Lord. They have fallen or following the rest of the world and what they're hungry for. And have lost the determination to follow Jesus. That's right, Julie. And listen, with my spiritual eyes and ears to me, I, I can hear Jesus saying to his church, Will you two go away? So what I'm going to do in this message, y'all, is look at, some, at this passage and look at three principles. Three things you need to have, we need to have, I need to have, if we're going to be determined to follow Jesus and to follow him all the way. So if Jesus would ask me, Jesus would ask you, if Jesus would ask us, we would go away, we would say no, because we believe that we are sure. Oh, stop right here, right? Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to let's go. Let's go. Here it is, y'all. If you want to follow Jesus, you got to have a spiritual revelation. Look at verses 52 and 59. People, although they were in the presence of Jesus, they were fed by the provision that only Jesus can give you. Let me help y'all. Let me pause right here. You need to recognize and realize that everything you have has come from Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything. That car you got. That house you live in. The food you ate. The air you're breathing. It all comes from Jesus. But they failed to receive or, or, or understand a revelation of who was providing for them. And you know what happened? Look at verse 52. They quarreled amongst themselves. In other words, whenever there's strength, whenever there's folks not getting along, whenever there's people uh, not getting along in their families, not getting along in our communities, not getting along in our nation, listen, not getting along in our churches, it's because we lost sight of who Jesus is. And what he's done for us. 
See, I, I pray, listen, y'all. I pray that we will be so determined to follow after Jesus that we will get closer to him. And can I help y'all? As we get closer to Jesus, we will automatically get closer to one another. Yeah. Amen. Right? Amen. And so here are these people. Listen, y'all. Just yesterday, they were in the presence of Jesus, experienced a miracle of being fed by his power with just two fish and five rolls of bread, but they were still hungry. There was only four natural food. They didn't realize who was giving it to them and the spiritual food he wanted to give them. So Jesus said, he challenges them, listen, y'all come up here hungry, listen, eat my bread, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Don't strive so hard for the food of this world because it will just leave you hungry again like Chinese food. When you strive for money, power, relationships, when you strive so much for fun and leisure, it will eventually leave you hungry. Amen? Amen. But if you take a partake of his flesh and of his blood, if you hunger for him, he will restore your soul. I want to tell you, only Jesus and Jesus alone can satisfy any need you have. Can I help y'all? He's your whole entire, your provider. He's your whole shalom. He's your peace. He's your whole rapha. He's your healer. He's your whole shalom who never leaves you. And he is your hoshua. He is your savior. Everything you need. Since you, uh, you I grew up in Germantown, amen, a uh, quasi-suburban part of northeastern Philadelphia. And there were some pear trees one day in our neighborhood, and we picked a bunch of pears, put them in a bucket in, in, in the living room, and you know what? I was watching cartoons, and I started eating some of them pears, amen. I must have ate like four or five or six of those. So much so that my stomach was hurting. But my mama, Kirsten, my, my mama, Betty and Lou. It was a Friday night. Made one of my favorite meals. Salmon cakes. Mac and cheese. Cabbage. Corn bread. Not the jiggly corn bread. I'm talking about the cornmeal corn. corn bread. And homemade, Sister Ellis, homemade lemonade. <laughs> but I have filled my stomach up with some nasty pears <laughs> that I couldn't enjoy the meal that was prepared. Come on now. Come on, beloved, in a few minutes, we're going to partake of the body and blood of Christ that represents the meal that heals us, the meal that saves us. Come on, the songwriter said, come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Come on, get joy over here. Salvation over here. There's love over here. We all say, fill my cup. Make the whole club work no more. See, see, you gotta have a spiritual revelation. When you do this, follow him. Here's the second point. Uh, you, you, you gotta have, what's this my second point? Second point, you gotta have an internal motivation. You like that? You like that? Verse 16, 66. Therefore, many of the disciples, when they heard this, this is a hard saying. Sorry, this is hard. Who can understand it? And from that, this is a sad part. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. They heard his teaching from Jesus to challenge them to feast on his body and blood. The many of his disciples, the crowd, the hanger ons decided this thing was too hard, and he stopped following Jesus, turned back, and followed him no more. There are some people who will join Jesus, who will join church. But when things get hard, yeah. 
When things get difficult, when there might be a cost, an inconvenience, a sacrifice of time, talent, or treasure, that's money, 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 y'all. They give up. Stop coming to church. Stop praying. Stop living for the Lord. And everybody here knows what that's like. There's people in all of our lives who promise to be with us through thick or thin. Who promise to love us no matter what. But when things get tough, y'all, they have a Janet Jackson attitude. What have you done for me lately?
You got to want the word. You got to want Jesus Christ. You, 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 you got to have a spiritual revelation. Here's where it gets personal, y'all. You got to have a personal illumination and declaration. Jesus told the twelve, "Will you go away?" So I can give the answer to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And also we need to come to believe in our soul. And you are a son of the living God, Christ. Here it is, after, listen y'all, after the majority of the disciples left. Amen. Young people, listen, don't be, don't, listen, don't be ashamed that you're not in the in crowd. Some of y'all in the in crowd will lead you into a whole lot of trouble. Amen. 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 See, because of this hard teaching about the body and blood, and the people left, he asked his own disciples, do y'all believe too? Peter answered for them, to whom shall we go? You have a word to eternal life. We believe in our children. You are Christ. So the living God. Can I postulate, big things? Can I postulate? Can I do it? I don't believe that, Jesus, that Peter and his crew understood any more than the folks who left. So I heard people say, oh, pastor, I would come follow the Lord. I would accept Jesus Christ if I just understood everything. There's a Greek word for that. Below me, right? There's a lot of stuff. You don't understand. Cell phone you got. You don't understand how it works. You still make phone calls. You don't understand the physics of the internal combustion engine. But you still get in your car and go where you need to go. You don't understand the dynamics of aerodynamics. Yet you get in the middle airplane. Don't even see the pilot. And let the plane take you. You don't even know how many licks does it take to get your chicken pole on the of a chicken pile. Good. You've been better to me. I've been listen, so many doors you 
Uh, look, this old story, y'all heard this too. There's a rule of the land, he's a king, right? And make a law, you couldn't do something in this country. And, and, and see, if you did something, right, you would be whipped 22 times. But then he found out that his mom broke the law. Talk about mom. And so, listen, she was supposed to get whipped 22 times because she broke the law. That's where we get that phrase, catch 22. So the king didn't know when he was secret. The law applied to everybody. Couldn't change it. He didn't want the rules wisdom to apply to his mama. Because he loved his mama. How can he keep his perfection and keep the law yet keep his mama from getting the 22 stripes? Remember how he did say how fast? How can he show his love with his mom and keep the law at the same time? What he did was he unbuttoned his kingly robe, stepped off of his kingly throne, went over to the post, and told his soldiers to give me the stripes that my mother deserved. She was guilty. The king made the law, but because he loved her, he wanted to keep the law. He stepped out of his throne and took the penalty himself. Guilty person. He loves his mom, uh, Mike. Wanted to keep the law and show his love. Stepped down from his throne. Took off his robe. And took the punishment that she deserved. Does that sound like anybody that you know? Come on, y'all. God had to rule the soul and sin of Israel down. But God so lovely that he sent his only begotten son who stepped down of heaven, took off his king and robe, put on a robe of flesh. He was determined because he was whipped for you. He was determined he was made in a cross for you. He was determined because he died for you. And so we can be justified. He was determined to rise on the third day so we can be the sons and daughters of God. He was determined to go all the way for you. Will you determine to go all the way for him? Or will you go away? He can y'all come on. Beloved, this is a decoration. We want to tell Jesus today. We want to tell him we want to go all the way. We want to go all the way. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to give up. It's time to press on. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I get it. It's difficult for me too. But Jesus Christ went all the way for you. Let's go all the way. Let's stand and sing this to the Lord today. Come on, y'all. Let's get the declare. Let's sing all the way. Sing it.
trying to find in the world, they'll never satisfy. What you need is Jesus Christ. Listen, He is determined to make a way for you. He is even determined to give Him your life. If you never trusted Jesus, and you're determined today to be right with Him, there's a gift He wants to give you, but you got to receive it by faith. If you want to receive that gift of salvation, listen. Pray something like this, Father, I'm a sinner. I turned away from you. I now believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. I receive him. He rose from the grave uh, to give me victory. And I receive him as my Savior today. I'm determined. Even though I don't understand it all, I'm determined to follow Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you, if you want to make a determination and a declaration today, Accept Christ and follow him. Step out in your office down to the front of the church. We will shout, we will pray for you. Or maybe you know more than you've gotten off track. Listen, the very people who turn away from God at that moment, later on in the scriptures, were saved by him. Listen, you can turn around. You can come back to Christ. If you want to be dedicated your life to Jesus, it's the best decision you can make. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm determined to follow you from this moment on. I'm dedicate my life to you. If you want to be dedicated to life to Christ, step out in the aisle, come down to the front of your church. Or put me dedicated in the chat. Listen, maybe you're saved, maybe you're right with God, but you haven't joined a local church. If you haven't joined a local church, you're not fully following God. You need to be determined to be a member of God's family at a local church. We'll help you follow Christ. We'll help you to walk out your gifts. We'll love on you, pray for you, pray with you. You need a church. In this hour, you need a church. If God is leading you here, be determined to obey Him right now. There'll be such joy in heaven and such joy in this house you would need. If you want to join us, sell it off. Step out in the aisle, come down to the front of the church, and we'll make you a member. Hallelujah. If you're watching the live, the best part is
to sacrifice for sin and to go back to his father. When he explained that to his disciples and explained that one of them would betray him, the disciples were naturally upset. He didn't understand what he meant. They were sad that he was leaving. But he gave them a reminder, a meal that would let us, let them know, and let us know. And while our sins may be great, they may be hard and awful, the love of Jesus and the blood of Jesus restores our souls. So we come here not in sorrow. We come here seriously, but we come joyfully. To remember our great Savior has done for us. Remember that He's made us part of His family. And this meal reminds us we are totally forgiven, totally loved, and totally accepted in the beloved. So He commands us to do this not out of form of fashion. He commands us to do this not out of Baptist tradition. He commands us to do this in For God so loved the world, yes, he that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Heavenly Father, you are the King of all kings, the creator of all there is, and I will be our holy and righteous name. Father, we come at this time bowing down to you, acknowledging the sacrifice made by your Son. Many, many years ago at Calvary. Father, we celebrate the elements that we are about to take part, take part in. The crafting, representing our Lord and Savior's broken body. And the grape juice, representing our Lord and Savior's spilled blood. Father, we would ask that you transform these elements from their physical sense into their spiritual sense so that we might be edified in the Bible. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ on that cross so that we who are nothing but filthy bags in your presence might have the opportunity for everlasting life. Father, all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And for his sake, we pray it all. And they all say, Amen. Amen.
in the cross. Eternal life in the cross. Have you all been served? Do we each have a body and blood of Christ? Is there anyone who needs a replacement element? Amen. On that night in which he was betrayed, let's all take the bread. He took the bread and he said, This is my flesh, which will be crucified for you. Yes, sir. That you might have life and life more money. Let's get together as a family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This cup represents the blood of Jesus, the blood that restores our souls. The blood that washes away all of our sins. Let us drink together as a family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, after they had sucked, they went out to the Mount of Olives and they sang him. Look, we don't have a Mount of Olives, but the whole city of Harrisburg, 2960, is the Mount of Olives. Listen to the church. Amen. Let's all stand together. Glory to His name.